Hi, my name is Dimitri and today I'll show you how to use Clockify and set everything up. We're going to go over the most important parts of Clockify, such as team management, roles and groups, workspace settings, clients, projects, different ways to track your time, dashboards, and reports. So what you see here on my screen is Clockify, and it'll help you and your team organize yourselves, your projects, and clients much better. The version you're seeing on my screen right now is the full feature version. Keep in mind, Clockify is also available for mobile on iOS and Android platforms. We also have a desktop app for Mac, Windows, and Linux. And we also have a browser extension for Chrome, Firefox, and Edge. To start setting up your workspace, head over to the Teams section. Here you can add new members by clicking on the button here and typing in the user's name and email address, one by one or in bulk, separating them with a comma, space, semicolon, or the Enter key. Once you've added all the members you'd like to join your workspace, you'll be able to assign them roles. Before we get into the roles, it's useful to note that the highest role is the workspace owner, followed by the admin. There can only be one owner, but multiple admins. They have similar permissions, but the main difference is that the owner can delete the whole workspace and remove admin roles. To assign a role to a team member, click here, and choose from the options of admin, project manager, or team manager. Project managers can edit all projects they manage, and see and approve all time on those projects while team managers can see all time of the users they manage and approve their timesheets. When assigning someone as a project or team manager, you need to choose the projects or the team members that they will manage. If you leave the role unassigned, that team member will have the permissions of a regular user. Now the next interesting team setting is the Groups tab. Here you can add team members to groups, which can then be treated as teams or departments. So to create a group, click right here to type in a group name and go ahead and click Add. Now to add people to the right group, click on the Access button and select the ones who will be part of the group from the drop-down menu. One person can be part of multiple groups. You can have as many groups as you need, giving access to the right people. And you can even assign team managers to the corresponding groups. Now that I talked a little bit about the different user roles and adding team members, let's explore the workspace settings. When you first create a Clockify account, you automatically get a workspace. With a single account, you can create or join multiple workspaces. These workspaces you belong to are their own separate entities, each with their own unique set of users, projects, entries, teams, and settings. Only admins of a workspace can see and edit the workspace settings. In the workspace settings, you can enable timesheets and other features, upload your company's logo, change the workspace name, choose how you want to group your projects, Choose if the duration format will be displayed with seconds, set the workspace billable rate and currencies, and so on. You can also control who can see billable rates and amounts, set if projects are billable by default, set who can create projects, tasks, clients, and tags, and so on. It's important to note that the owner and admins of an organization can create a new workspace within the organization. You do that by clicking on the three dots here, and then on Manage Workspaces. Here you can see all of the workspaces that belong to your organization, as well as the members across them. When you click the Create Workspace button, you'll be able to choose for which product in the Cake.com suite you want in your workspace. Pumble lets your team communicate in one place, and Playkey helps you organize work and projects. For now, we'll choose Clockify, name the workspace, and save. Once created, you'll be able to switch to different Clockify workspaces or products in the menu here. Now that we've set up your team and your workspace, the next step would be to set up a client. By default, only owners and admins can add new clients. But if given permission, project managers and regular users can do it too. To add a new client, go to the Clients page, type in a client name, and click Add. Now the new client will show up in the list, and you can add more details by clicking on the pen icon. You can add the client's email address, physical address, notes, and their currency. If you need a new currency for a client, you can set it up in the workspace settings and choose it here. Once you set up your clients page and you're happy with how it looks, we can move on to projects. The permission for creating projects works the same way it does for clients, so keep that in mind. Let's go to the projects page and here you'll notice the create new project button. Click on it and add the project name, custom color, mark it as public or leave this unchecked if the project will be private 
and then assign a client if the project has one. Once you've created a project, you can select it when tracking time. In the Projects Access tab, you can give access to individual team members or groups, so they'll be able to see it. If you set the project as private, then only people who are on the project will be able to select it when tracking time. With access out of the way, we can now move on to tasks. When you click on the project, you'll be directed to the Tasks tab right away. Now, simply type in the task name and click Add. As soon as the tasks are created, they'll be assigned to anyone. So anyone who has access to the project can track time on these tasks. If you want to specify a user who should be tracking time on a certain task, just select one or multiple users that we previously added like this. In the project settings, we can change additional details. And if you need an additional way to keep your track time organized, you can use tags. Tags can be created by admins or by anyone if it's enabled. Once created, tags can be selected from a list when tracking time, similar to how projects are chosen. You've set up your project. Now let's see how tracking time works. We have a couple of options to track our time. We have the timer mode, the manual mode, and the timesheet option, if it's been enabled in the workspace settings. Before we get into more details about tracking time, it's really important to note that there's an option to make some fields required in order to save the time entry. This setting can be found in the workspace settings. For example, we can set that an entry can't be saved without the project. Let's see how this works by tracking time via the timer. Click on the Start button and the timer will start ticking. You can add a description to add details for what you're working on, add tags like this, and mark the time as billable or leave it as unbillable. The billability status is inherited from the project you chose. Because we have a required field, before saving the entry, you would need to select a project from the list, and then you'll be able to save it. The timer keeps running, even if you leave the page or close the browser. And if you leave the timer on for more than eight hours, you'll get an email that the timer is still running in Clockify. You can also continue tracking time with the same information as the previously recorded entry by simply clicking on the play button. The tracker also has a manual mode, in case you forgot to start the timer before you started working on something. You can switch to manual mode here and add the same details. The difference being that here you have to enter the start and stop times manually. By clicking on the calendar icon, you can change the date if needed. Now you can go ahead and save the entry by clicking Add. In addition to these two ways of tracking your time, you can also record your time through a timesheet. The timesheet uses a much quicker method for adding time. Simply select the projects or specific project tasks that you were working on and add the time you spent working on each. If you want to add more details, such as tags or a description, you can hover over a cell, click on these three dots, and you'll see a window to add more details. You can also switch to a different week using the date navigation in the top right corner. Timesheet also allows you to save your typical work week as a template. Or copy last week's entries to this one, so you can quickly fill it in. The time tracker and the timesheet share the same data, so if you're adding time through the tracker, it'll be visible in the timesheet and vice versa. All users can edit or delete their time, as long as it hasn't been locked. You can delete time by clicking here and then confirming the action. To delete an entry on the tracker, click on the three dots, choose Delete and Confirm. The next really cool thing is the calendar view. In the calendar, you can see all of your track time, see what your day looks like at a glance, and notice possible work patterns. Here you can clearly see if you've got any gaps in your day, where you forgot to log your time, and you can see if you've double booked time and have overlapping entries too. You can edit time entries directly within the calendar. Drag and drop the whole time block to move it to some other time slot or date like this. If you forgot to add time entirely, you can also create new time entries directly within the calendar. Click on any open time slot to add a time entry. And you can also drag the start and end time edges of the time block to shorten or extend the entry. You can also connect your personal Google or Outlook calendars. This way, you'll see your events next to the track time. And you'll be able to create time entries for those events. Now let's see one of the ways in which you can analyze your track time. 
The dashboard will give you an overview of your most used project and client, and an overview of all of the hours tracked by projects or by billability. You can choose a date range right here, from one of the preset ones, or choose any date range manually. If you scroll down to the bottom, you can see each individual team member that's been invited, and if they've clocked any time. You can also see if any of your team members are currently tracking time. If you reference this table a lot, you might want to pin it to the top, right here. One of the most useful features in Clockify are the reports. Reports are where you actually really get to see and use the data from everything that we've just talked about. The first type of report is the summary report. It shows you all of the track time and breaks it down by any dimension you need. You can see the time tracked each day or week. And below you can also see a summary table broken down by other criteria. For example, you can group the reports by user, and the table will show you track time like this. You can break down data even further by using a subgroup right here, like the project, for example. Now you can expand the user and see how much time they've tracked by date like this. If you want to see data for the whole month or any other time range, you can choose that here. At the top of the report, you'll see filters, which will help you see only what you need to see. For example, if you want to see time for a certain client, select the client and go ahead and click filter. Once you get all of the details you need for the report, you can export it. And you can also share it with a link. Next, the detailed report. Now the detailed report has every single detail and it's great for backup or even a pivot table. It lists all of the entries of you and your team. If you happen to be an admin or a team manager and it's been permitted in the workspace settings, you can correct entries by clicking on what you wish to edit just like this and adjust as you would in the time tracker. Here you can also double check by filtering entries that don't have a project. There's also a weekly report, which shows you a weekly breakdown of your time in a classic timesheet view. It shows a summary of all of the time for each day in the week, as well as the total time. You can group time entries, either by project or by user. Grouping by project is useful because you can see how much time you worked on for each client. On the other hand, grouping by user is useful when you want to see how much time each person on your team has worked on each day. Just like any of the previous reports, you can filter data, change the time range, share the report, print and export the results. To see who hasn't tracked any time in the given week, group the report by user like this, and then click on Show Users Without Time. Only admins can see this option. We hope this video helps you set up your Clockify account and workspace. Make sure to check out our other videos or the Help Center for additional details about everything we talked about today. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.